Yeah, it's raining. Not as much as it's going to be raining in a couple of days, though. When we have another uh, atmospheric river event happening here up in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, Pacific Northwest. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Today, QDX updates. Two updates. Number one, QDX firmware update that is pretty important. In fact, today there were two firmware updates. That's how hard Hands is working on this stuff. So that's pretty cool. So I'll share with you the details about that. And I will share with you the details about the next batch of QDX. So if you missed out on the first batch, do not despair. There is another batch coming. It is in production currently. And we will talk all about that right now. <laughs> so that's so much fun. I'll try just transport you from one spot to the next. So we're gonna talk about the QDX digital transceiver here. First things first are the firmware updates. So Hans actually uh, produced firmware update uh, 101E, actually 101D last night, uh, which would have been the 24th of November, uh, 2021. And he released 101E this morning and then later released 102. Uh, he, and he says it's been a long afternoon. By the way, we're at the uh, QRP Labs groups.io group. That's where all the action is. Uh, he says, hi all, it's been a long afternoon and my head hurts, but I am pleased to release QDX firmware version 102, which I believe fixes all known issues and also includes all two feature requests submitted so far. Here they are. New transmitter test terminal application lets you test PTT and transmit. Wonderful addition because that way you know if it's your setup and you're not getting your audio routed correctly or your cat control done correctly So you can test it. You can check the output, which is way cool. So nice job there um, New items and configuration terminal application lets you disable transmit by band If you don't have like for example, I have uh, an antenna that I've set up for 80 40 20 and I think it'll do 15 and 10 I can't remember now but it'll, it'll do, I think it'll do 17 actually, but um, it won't do 30. And if I try to transmit on 30, I'm going to have a very, very high SWR. So um, since, the, since the QDX is 80, 40, 30, 20, I disabled 30. That way I can't even accidentally transmit on 30 and perhaps damage the finals. So that's really cool. Um, a log end timestamp is written at the end of the delay log, of the log display rather so that you know the current elapsed time since power up, which is pretty good. Um, bug fix, prevent log file overflow and white noise intermittent on power up is fixed. Now these are in addition to other fixes. This is um, also fixes with the came in 101D have to do with, um, or it might've been 101C, I forget, but one of them, uh, which is of course included in this one. So if you're on 101, the original 101 or 101A, B or C, you can just upgrade straight to 102. You don't need to worry about like stepping up between one or the other. Every single one is a new, brand new firmware. So just upgrade that firmware, you're done. Um, but there were a lot of problems with cat control. And what Hans found is that there were two separate processes, two separate processes sharing memory space. And that's why it was intermittent because there's a fair bit of memory but they would override each other. And some of the symptoms included just regular uh, cat control errors, uh, PTT delay errors, um, off by 10 errors on frequency. Like when it would go to check the frequency or set the frequency, instead of being, you know, 14.078.000, it'd be zero, uh, one, or gosh, I can't remember. It was off by 10, uh, that's, we'll leave it at that. Um, so we're off by, yeah, off by a factor of 10. So there was a lot of problems with that and that has been solved. I've been running 101, I think it was C, uh, since last night or yesterday afternoon. And I can confirm that it's fixed. There haven't been any cat control errors. Uh, there are also some startup errors. This white noise, uh, intermittent on power up is fixed. So he goes into a long explanation of each one. Uh, and you can also, you know, go check the QRP labs, um, groups.io page for uh, information about each of these. I think, let's see here, 101E. Yeah, 
Uh, 101D, no, that's a different topic here. Let me see if I can find the topic. There it is, 101D. And so in this topic, he goes over the problem with um, uh, the firmware. And so anyway, at any rate, he's got it all fixed. And it, it, the fixes did work. There are some further issues that need to be resolved though. So if you're having problems with cat control on your QDX, get your firmware updated. Uh, just go into the, you can either just um, unplug it while it's booting up. So you see that fast flashing light, just unplug it, plug it back in, and then drag the .qdx file that you download from QRP Labs. And, and you can just go to the web page and let's see here, firmware 102. Download that, open up the zip file, get the .qdx file out of it, and stuff that into the flash drive that appears. And then um, if you got into the firmware update mode by unplugging it, that it'll automatically reboot. Um, I typically do it so that uh, I go into the firmware or go into the serial console and say update firmware, just have it to do things like that. And then it'll appear, uh, I can, you know, the uh, flash drive will appear and I have to, I can update it, but then I have to power cycle it manually. So either way, whatever you do, get it, get it updated soon. Um, you will definitely want that. Some really good stuff there. And of course, and here's all the, the revisions by history, which I could have looked at too. But I'll put, I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below. So that's it for the QDX firmware update madness that's been happening over the last few days. You can see, uh, uh, yeah, two of them today, one yesterday. So quite a lot going on. Now, the QDX first batch shipping is complete and there is a second batch update. All right, so uh, he says, in the end, there are only five QDX which did not did not pass testing, which is a 99% success rate on the 500 manufactured boards. Not bad at all, indeed. Uh, there are were four QDX orders that weren't fulfilled until the second batch. And if you're one of those people, you would, would, have, would have gotten an email. Uh, so anyway, there's that. So the second batch uh, consists of 375 boards using this uh, STM32 controller. Uh, they managed to source at great expense, he says, and the ADC chips he already has in stock. He's also working on alternatives for the third batch, which will be at least a thousand QDX. But I will need to go through an iteration of prototype testing because the part numbers will change. So again, this is having to do with the global supply chain problems uh, for semiconductors that everybody is dealing with. So um, Hans is looking at even changing parts to make sure that he can make more QDX. So that's pretty awesome. So the second batch, uh, of course, this, this was posted November 24th. So he says the second batch is in the PCB assembly facility awaiting surface mount devices. My estimated availability is mid-December. I'm not going to take pre-orders until they are in my hands and I have tested them and sure the new PCB revision is okay. So lots of testing, um, which is a really awesome thing. And um, this is, a, the, the, let me tell you, QDX is worth the wait. The receiver on it is so good. Um, I, I will maybe, I might do another video at some point uh, to talk about how good this thing is, but um, all I can tell you is by the seat of the pants, honestly, it's so good. If you do FT8, if you do JS8, if you do any of the uh, frequency, sh the F I think that it's the FSK modes where they um, produce one tone at a time and move it around a lot. Not phase shift king, not PSK, but uh, fre frequency shift king, FSK modes. And FTA, JSA, uh, those are um, FSK modes. So I think it'll even do ratty, I'm not sure. I think there's a list on the groups.io page that somebody put together of all the modes it'll do. but. Um, also, also, it'll, it will successfully do, do 60 meters. So if you're into doing mo stuff on 60 meters, uh, it, it does work fine. Um, John AE5X, I believe it is, he did some testing on it and showed that it works great on 60 and um, the filter for 40. 
it provides sufficient filtering and uh, it, it just works. So really the QDX is now a five band radio. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you have gotten this far and it's been helpful to you, please subscribe, click like, tell a friend. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm being dorky now. Um, so thank you for, again, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video about a completely different product that is not even a kit that I think you're going to enjoy. So uh, that will be released very soon as well. So I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, you can also go to my website, miss.geek.com and subscribe there. Although I have to admit, YouTube is getting all the love lately. And so I have been going through uh, quite a bit. I've, I've just been busy. So uh, YouTube has been my uh, my thing lately. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.